Hello. Hello. Today we, I ask, thank you for everybody for doing that because I think that's a beautiful note to start on because um, another thing we should be grateful for is Mother Gaia. Uh, there was um, requests before we came on air that we uh, channel Mother Gaia today and I think that I'm going to ask her to come through. Uh, she has been so good to us. She allows us to be who we are with her, and she is as gentle with us as possible, although it doesn't seem like it sometimes. But she is loving, wonderful, and she is uh, following God's will just as we are because she was created by God just as we are. So... There was some requests for different people to come in today, but Mother Gaia was uh, high on the list, and I feel her presence around us, so I think I'm going to ask her to come in first. Thank you. So, Thank and you. then after that, whoever else, there were several requests for different uh, people, but such as the L and others, but I think Mother Gaia uh, should speak. I think that she has a lot to say. I really do especially right now. Yeah, so much love. Yes. So I will um, do a slight meditation or a light meditation, and uh, I will bring her in if she's wanting to come. Very good, Jim. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's so delightful to be here today. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome you. <laughs> and I know that you have called me because there's so many things you want to know. <laughs> And I don't even know where to start because there's so much information that I can give to you right now. It is a time when information is abundant about changes and things that are happening. So I, if you want to know about the energies first, I will let you know about that first. <laughs> yes, please. Well, the energies still are calming down from last fall, from that great pulse of energy from the triad, blood, moon, and the, and the eclipse, and all the different things that were happening all at once, and so many energies coming from outside the world, and outside of who, who I am, and I would receive them with open arms, but yet of cause the great disturbance in, in who I was, of course, because these energies were very different in some ways. They're, uh, they're the beginnings of the change, so I have to synthesize them into my, into my energetic field that I've had for many, many millions of years, of course. And these energies are more subtle in the way that they will change your thought processes into thinking about more of the future and more of light and more of the love and more of the magic that exists in the universe that you know nothing about. <laughs> I call it magic, but it really is science. But it is like magic. Do you understand? <laughs> yes. I mean, it will bring in some thought processes that you never had before, and there will be people rising up, feeling these wonderful energies, but give that some time. It has not yet happened. Like the middle of June is when these energies will be come to fruition and new energies will be coming in. <laughs> so there will be actually new energies with this new moon and this solstice and this um, time as well. And so this is a time of great changes. <laughs> and I am so happy to make you aware that they are all positive. Even though I know at first, in the early months of this year, they were very difficult on some of you, but there were lessons to be learned and thought processes to be carried forth that had to happen. 
<laughs> just the way they happened. So therefore, it is it is slowing down. It is becoming more of a part of you. It is becoming more who you are. And this is why you're coming to great realizations about yourself and great realizations about the earth and about the sky and about your futures and about how things come to pass. So therefore, continue just to bring in these beautiful thoughts and beautiful ways and beautiful energies and synthesize them into your system. Don't, don't reject them because that just makes things harder. And there are some people that have rejected them in some ways because they don't like change. However, to accept them is so much easier. And they will have to accept them eventually anyway. <laughs> is there any questions about that? <laughs> in terms of the energy, how does... does is that tied in any way to some of the uh, some of the Earth movements, uh, some of the uh, climate changes, any of that? A little bit. This is more affecting the human portion of the planet. These energies also affect me as the planet itself. However, they are not damaging. They are. They do shake up the Earth a little bit here and there and the other places. But they will calm down in that way. They will not be a continual influence on the planet. Do you understand? They at first, yes, but not. They're they're getting much softer now. But the attitudes and changes in human thoughts, processes, physiologies, and things of that nature are what is greater in these energies. But yes, of course. They were strong when they entered, so they did affect some earth movement and some earth energies as a whole, all the way to the core. <laughs> and in terms of at times. in terms of accepting the energy, <laughs> um, what is the best way to do that through meditation? How how intention? Just how do you? Let. Just let it happen. You, it's not that most people are intentionally trying to to reject it. It is it is going to come in naturally. Some at first uh, felt it that was was so differently <laughs> that they they sort of uh, put up a little barrier against it. But now are are letting it come in because they feel it all around. It is what it is, and it has to come in. And so there's not much they can do to reject it anymore. <laughs> oh, yes. Much um, love. Much love. Um, Valerie had a question. Yes, Valerie. Well, hello, sweet Gaia. <laughs> hello, my dear. I know that you know who I am. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, I would like to know if there's anything more humanity can do to help you in your ascension. You are already doing many things. <laughs> the building of these lovely structures called pyramids will help the energy come to me as well. Do you understand that? <laughs> and there are so many pyramids around the Earth on every continent that will be activated very shortly because of the kind of energy that is coming through. This will also make life much easier because when you are close to a pyramid, um, the air is cleaner, the energy is purer, the life is more positive, well, it actually amplifies the life that force within you. So if you have a positive life force within you, it will amplify that. So it is a beautiful thing to be near, and some of you are near pyramids and don't even know it. <laughs> Some have not even been unearthed yet, and some have been hidden 
in forests, and some are are just everywhere around, but there's many, and their energies are now going to come back alive again in a very, I'm not that they ever died, but they're going to be much more powerful. Well, thank you for mentioning that. Um, because there is <laughs> some talk of a pyramid in Montana. Yes. Do you know of that? <laughs> yes, and you will find it. <laughs> oh, how wonderful! Thank than you than so much. You are more than you are more than welcome. But I cannot tell you where they are because you must find it by its own energies. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Much love, Gaia. Much love to you. Hello, Gaia. Um, Hello. Hold on, David. Um, it's Jonah Lee's turn. Oh, no problem. Jonah Lee, I like oh. that. Hello, Mother Gaia. Hello. Um, you, <laughs> you have such beautiful energy. Thank you. I'm glad to be a part of your life. Um, with the thoughts and attitudes changing among humans, how may we help those in our own sphere of influence to change what is beneficial for them? Or is that be a, a good Be a good example to them. <laughs> that is the best way anyone can affect the earth, is to be a good example. Also, meditation. Of course, all the different lovely energies that you like to project from yourself, but there is nothing more powerful than a good example. Do you understand that? The oh. feeling of your positive energy coming out and knowing that it is genuine. Some people find that positive energy is questionable because they don't trust it. Because there's so many con artists out there. But if you have genuine love energy coming out, and it continues to come out and it does not change and it shows exactly who you are this is the greatest influence of, for the people directly around you okay and a second part to that question if I may how, <laughs> yes. how, um, how can we help redirect thoughts or how can we prevent ourselves from the frustration of not being, of what we're doing, what we're yes. projecting, not being observed and duplicated. I'm not sure I understand that. Not being I'm duplicated? Not sure <laughs> I'm not going to clone you, dear. <laughs> However, um, what the best way, I think that the answer to that is. How not to be, I think you're asking how not to be affected by negative energies that are around you, but to, to be more of an influence to the people around you in a positive way. Is that right? Yes, and in, in, in a positive way that is effective for them. Ah, yes. Well, let's, let's we put it this way. <laughs> if there is positive energy coming out of you and pushing out, and they're trying to push negative energy in. You do not have to accept that. You do not have to accept any negative energy from anyone. And you remain solid on your positive grounding. You ground yourself into the positivity and into me because I will help you to ground into a beautiful positive energy and with that grounding you cannot be shaken you Good. cannot be Thank shaken you. if you believe that it is the right thing to do they can't make you mad you can't have an argument unless you are accepting some of that negativity you see if you accept some of that negativity of course there's going to be an interaction but if you do not accept it how can you interact with negativity if you're not accepting it <laughs> well good question that that's very true and so, so you're basically just there, not you're responding going, in so they're yes they're trying to interact in a negative way and you're going I love you why do this yeah and okay 
why do this? Why argue when we can have a beautiful relationship and not one of interchanging of negativity? I just love it. <laughs> it is how I get along with the universe. I, there are some I planets see. that are, they have personalities that are not quite as beautiful as, say, Lady Venus or Lady Jupiter. Most of the planets are women. But they are lovely. Because the reason why most of the planets are women is because they are fertile and they grow. They give off that... that Oh, beautiful motherhood of the planet. There are some male planets, but they're sort of barren. But it is a beautiful thing. Now, did you have another part to that question? I'm sorry, I, I like to ramble. <laughs> <laughs> I tend to ramble too. <laughs> so I know I'm in good company. Uh, there really is no other part to that question other than that I need to figure out how to do it within my own Yes, self. it is not easy for humanity to not accept the negativity that's all that is part of things that are all around them because society makes things difficult to be pure. Society makes it difficult for you to be yourself. Society right. makes it difficult for you to be genuine. <laughs> but if you are genuine they can, you cannot be. <laughs> okay. Good deal. And thank you so very much. You are welcome. I love you. I love you too. And I like to rumble as well as ramble. <laughs> well, maybe I'll go rumble in your soil later on this morning. <laughs> that sounds wonderful. Thank you, guys. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yes. <laughs> Is there other questions? Um, yes, we had a question from uh, David, but I believe he dropped. Um, so, Sabrina, can... is the, Sabrina the, his question is at the side. Can you read it? Yeah. He says, I am wondering if the earthquakes, sorry, I am wondering if the earthquakes that are happening beneath the surface all over Gaia are being caused by an extraterrestrial war beneath the surface. This is being spoken by many channelers. A war between, a war under the surface. Well, I guess lava and, uh, and tectonic plates do have sort of a, a war together. <laughs> But the war is not with any beings under the surface, no. It is just that there are much disturbances as I'm going through my changes. There are many changes to go through, and so therefore as changes happen, you rumble as well. Uh, especially you ladies can understand as we go yeah. through our later <laughs> parts of our lives. We, we change and we have hot flashes and we have cold flashes and we change things and we grow hair in places that we don't have hair before. All those things happen to Mother Earth as well. But not in the same way, of course. But I'm just making an example. <laughs> I have a question to add to that. Yes. Mother Gaia, I understand at the end of this year, between the fall equinox and the winter, there'll be a major shift into the fourth density. There'll be a, a, a greater, even though we've all been moving at our own speed, there'll be more of an overt of a shift. I see. At the end, it, can you speak about that? Yes. Of course, the future can change at the drop of a hat, <laughs> so to speak, because many decisions must be made. But the, the way that the Earth is moving at this time, that is a probability and a possibility that fourth dimensional energy for many of humanity, many people in humanity, will change and become much greater. Now, <laughs> if certain decisions are made down the way, it could be much less or not at all. But I see, as I see it at this point, <laughs> We are on a track together to face more 
and possible fourth dimensional energies that will be very, very helpful in your ascension process. Does that make sense to you? I understood it to be fourth density, not fourth dimension. In other words, fourth density, fifth dimension, since we are already in the fourth. Well, you see, many people are understanding the dimensions differently. We all learn our dimensions in one way or another. And that is fine. I think that the universe should get together and the galaxy should get together and describe them all the same way so we can yeah. all get on the same page. <laughs> I second that. <laughs> but it won't happen. But yes, I understand what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah. And yes, that is a yes. At this point, we are headed that yeah, direction. Right, yeah. Has it to do with the ore cloud that it's moving in too close to the great galactic? Central sun. Oh, it has. It has to do with, that. Yeah. It has to do with many things. It, yeah, yes. More cosmic, more it, divine. It's, it has to do with the alignment of many things. So it's not just that, but that is a, a, a problem. Mm, that's part of it. <laughs> Thank you. That's only about 35% of it, though. Oh, okay. There are so many other things that are involved with this dimensional shift, as you would call okay. it. There is many other things involved with that, and that's why I say the future can change at the drop of a hat, because there are those that are around the planet that are affecting it as well. There are those that are in the planet that are affecting this as well. There are those that are on the planet affecting it as well. And, it, and also, the thought processes that need to move forward are moving forward at the correct rate at this yeah, time. Yeah. Now, there are some things that can bring it down. Your, there are global thought processes about economy collapses and things of this nature that bring negative thought processes to this. Okay. There are also thoughts about invasion from your political era. And let me explain that. <laughs> They see thousands of ships coming to the to the gal to the solar system and around the planet, and they are very frightened by this. <laughs> your your governments are afraid that the the reason why there are so many ships is because there is going to be an invasion, and that is not the truth. <laughs> it's not that to invade. Many are there to watch and listen and be a part of the ascension at this point because it's a beautiful point in the ascension the uh, the new the new energies and all this and they know about these things that are coming however <laughs> your governments do not know that so they they think oh they're preparing there's so many ships we have no chance they're preparing their government for attack i understand they're, they're preparing, uh, preparing universally on this planet for some kind of an attack. They will not attack first, of course. <laughs> that would be silly. <laughs> Tell me, my other Gaia, though, the divine, the cosmos, they have, it, the source has the final say, and that's what I'm saying yes. here. Because all this is little peanuts. Yes, but he will let you have your say because he has given you free He's will. Say again. Now it's like we're done deal. <laughs> He's given you your say in the sense of free will. And you still have that. If he is not going to come in if your free will says no. He will listen to you because he wants to see exactly how you will move. Now, if you go to destroy yourself at a particular point, <laughs> it won't happen. <laughs> Because others will use their free will to stop it. But um, a Father God, Mother Father God, whoever you want to call it, the Creator, the beginning, the I am that I am, the source, all right, these right. different names that you give me is all the same. Yes, he is here to accompany you according to your free will. If you ask for his help... You will not deny that. <laughs> I certainly ask for it all the time. <laughs> and he's been gracious and good. Mm -hmm. 
But your free will also counts. He does not dis, dis, he does not just forget about who you are. He loves all of you and sees you as beams of fire, light, understanding, and it measures you by your beauty and love. So that is how you are measured in the the cosmos. How is how much love you produce in your body and how much of him you are able to reproduce on your planet. <laughs> Thank you so much. You are welcome. Are there more questions? Sean? Oh, hi, Guy. I, I, first of all, I just want to say I love you so much. I you love know, you. Thank you, for, th thank you for supporting us all, you know. You're, you're, you're like a hero, you are, you know. Um. Uh, anyway, um, my question is, um, do do you, do you know what Moldify is? Moldify. Moldavite. It's a. It's basically. Oh, Moldavite. Yes, I know what that is. Yes. Yeah. So, like, my question is, uh, I, I like, I received information that basically that that Moldavite, that comet that hit Earth. That it came from the galactic center, and when it hit the earth, it delivered, uh, you know, uh, galactic inner galactic energies to the earth. And I'm just yeah. curious if that's true or not. Yes, that's true. That is true. Moldavite is a very positive and beautiful. It's a stone, but it has its own energies. You understand, and they are positive energies and healing energies, and and bring in. A lot of different. I, I could go on and on about the different kinds of energies that stones and different things produce for the uh, the the whole universe. But thank you very much for bringing that up. But I wanted to say this to you, Sean. You are a very beacon of love that shines out very brightly, even though all the things around you may not be positive, you still are able to shine forth. And it's a beautiful and wonderful thing. I love that. Thank and you. I, <laughs> and, and I just love you. And, like, you know, I just try and hug you every day. You know, I just freaking love you. I You're know. awesome. I know. Thank you so much. But the stones are a talk for another time. But they do help. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Sam? Sam! Good morning, Mother Gaia. Good morning. <laughs> uh, I got a question for you regarding the energy. There, there are a lot of pyramids uh, in yeah. China that is covered up in dirt. Yeah. I don't, I don't know why um, China is uh, trying to cover up, but does that pyramid still activate or does it work even though it's all covered up? It still works. Covered or uncovered, the structure is seen. It is separate from the dirt because it is stone. Stone is a wonderful conductor for this kind of energy. It is the greatest of the conductors for this kind of energy. And so, therefore, it is set aside from the dirt, from the soil, and the cosmos can still see the pyramid and still use the energy or still bring energy into it. Yes, nothing can really stop it from gaining the energy and bringing it to Mother Earth. That's me. So it, it comes to me and I feel it and it's still wonderful and fresh because that energy that comes from the pyramids is so pure and so filtered from all the th different things that you might wanted to be filtered from <laughs> and you can intend it to be filtered from even more things you see your intention on these pyramids as you use it for your own good and for the good of humanity can you can throw intentions on it to change it and make it greater now also remember there are those that will choose to to always bring something negative to the table. And they can throw negative intentions on it. However, if there are more positive intentions than negative, which there always are on the pyramids, 
they, that will be honored. And the reason why they cover these pyramids up in China is because they were being negatively used. Okay. And now they cannot be. And they won't be. And they never will be again. Wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. Can you also, uh, if possible, provide us information? Who built those pyramids? They were built by all, many species know about pyramids. But, and brought that information to the earth. And then humanity began to understand and build smaller pyramids, of course. They could not build the size of pyramids that the aliens could make because they just did not have the technology to lift the stones and anti-gravity and all those different things. But they made their own pyramids and were very successful with the energies that were made with their own pyramids. But yes, many of the original period pyramids, or all of the original pyramids, were made by off-world people. <laughs> but they taught humans what they were for and how they were made and what they were made for. And some of that information has been very lost. <laughs> because yeah. you know, whatever is... Whatever you put into a pyramid can be cleansed. Whatever you put into a pyramid will be energized, will be strengthened, will have a greater, um, if that's what your intention is, will be a greater. So the pyramids in Egypt were used for great energy purification. <coughs> also, they had many, many different uses, not just for energy and purification, but the people would also be part of this and want to be purified and, and enlightened. And actually, pyramids were used <laughs> to move from one world to another with, with some help from crystals and other technology. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Monica. You're so welcome. So welcome. So welcome. Yeah. Uh, continue. Is this? Ooh. Hello, Gaia. This is Guru Dan. How are you? I am wonderful. Thank you. Good. <laughs> I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for accepting all the energies I give you when I'm working. Oh yes, it's I purify them for you. Yes. I oh, would that's also a thing, thing you bring up. I yes. purify energy. Yes. Yes, that's what I wanted to bring up is that if somebody is feeling sad or they have energies they don't know what to do or deal with, they can just give it right to the planet. They can just ground it right through you and, and you will handle it and it will be yes. awesome if they would just do that. I can purify the energies and reuse them in other ways or in similar ways if you like. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Dan. Oh, you're welcome. Yes, the energies that you, you take out of people that you're healing with energetically can be brought down to Mother Earth and will help to bring out the positive aspects of this energy, change it, if you will, into that which can be used in a positive way. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so... Um, I had one question for yeah. for the people. Let's say they find themselves in areas where you know there's earthquakes and those kinds of things. Yeah. Um, what advice could you give to them? Move. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just teasing, <laughs> but not really. But some places are very dangerous at this time. There is no stopping. The tectonic plates, it's like a pimple. If it's going to come, it will come. You can't stop a pimple. You can try to bring, you can try to uh, uh, get some anti-pimple cream or whatever it is, but if it's going to come, it will come. And that is just like my body as well. Certain things happen. I am, my body is not perfect. <laughs> and so there will be earthquakes, volcanoes. There will be things that are dangerous 
upon me, and I do not wish to harm anyone, but when they happen, they are not any fault of my own. They are just natural. And God has ordained that this is how the pressure can be released so that I don't explode <laughs> and so that I don't have, that I can be healthy. Do you understand that? Yes. But for people in these areas, I would say, please be aware that it is not me that is, I am not controlling that particular bit of, of the seismic or the volcanic, but there are those that are trying to help me by putting the salve on or trying to help it be less so that less people are harmed. And I do not want to harm the people of the planet. Planet, of course not. Oh, no, far be it from me to want that. <laughs> but it does happen. But they return to energy, and that is a beautiful thing. And I know that is true. So, but sometimes when lots of energy is leaving the planet from one area, it makes me a little sad, because that energy helps me as well. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, because it was, uh, as you know, there there's been a few um, earthquakes <laughs> recently, so that's why oh, I was yes. asking. Oh, yes. And they are what they need to be. But much love to you that uh, I love you all, and I do wish no harm upon you, but if you return to energy, that is a blessing as well. <laughs> and I feel grateful that you do return to energy. If I felt or if I knew that you returned to, or became nothing, I would be very sad. But Mother Gaia. Your energy never dies. How, how do you perceive humans? Do you, do you see you us energy? as energy? Yes, you are energy to me. You are f little, I see you somewhat how God sees you, as little pieces of energy, you little flames and things of this nature. He sees you as a little more clearly probably than I do because you are on the surface of my skin, so it's hard to really perceive you as a, you actually you are. This is a very interesting format because I can see your emblems. Do these emblems represent who you are? <laughs> Sometimes I wonder. Ah, there you are. See, now I see what you look like as in your human form in this way, and I'm wondering about these emblems that, that take your, they're the place of your face, wondering if they have energies that I'm not aware of, but I don't feel anything. But it is a curiosity at all times to wonder about my people that that populate my planet. But I love you all. My emblem, I call it expressions of God. Ah, it is more of a gratitude to God. Yes. It is beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay. Um, does anyone else in the room with Jim have any questions? Oh, I have to go soon anyway. But okay. is there any more questions? I have a few more minutes. Yeah. I have one question. Could you tell me a little bit about Goddess Pele? Goddess Pele goes by many names. What would you like to know about her? <laughs> I, I, just how she feels about what's happening in the world, how she's contributing. They are all contributing as much as they can to the, to the Earth. All the goddesses and princesses and those of lesser deities that are created by God, of course, are helping the earth to rise unless they have another format, of course. But Penny is gentle, beautiful, understanding, and actually with a few of the people of your planet guiding and directing. And with more, some of the more powerful entities guiding them into an understanding of the other dimensions. Do 
you understand what I'm saying? Well, I don't understand the under dimensions, but I understand guidance. <laughs> yes. Continue. Is there more you want to know? No, that was a taste. I just wanted a taste. Having been to Hawaii, I... Feel... She is the goddess that is of the heart. Just appreciated the feeling of magic around her. Well, she is a heart being. A heart... She hangs around my heart. <laughs> And that is a beautiful thing. She ministers to me in the way that makes me feel kind and good. And, and she brings out my gentleness and kindness when people are there. Yes. Thank you. Brother Guy, I have one more question from Slava. Oh, could. Slava. Hello, Slava. Love, love to you. So he said, um, is it, I guess he, he's wondering about your mother, and is it true that you have a mother which is called the twin planet? Yes. There is a mother planet. <laughs> but there is more than one. But my mother planet is very large, the size of ten suns, and is the beautiful essence of life itself and is has many different species and uh, sentient everything on mother the mother planet is sentient meaning that the plants are alive the trees are alive this what you might call an animal or anything even the stones have motion there it is a beautiful, beautiful and mysterious place because there are very, very few like it in the universe. Is it... Can, can you say where it is? You would not know where it is. It's okay. far, far beyond your vision. <laughs> and he also asked about planet Gloria in the solar system. I believe it's our brother sister. Could you tell us about their civilization, please, and, and the relationship with you? In this solar system? Yes, that's what he said. I'm not I wasn't aware her name was Gloria. <laughs> but there is a planet around Jupiter that is a sister of mine and I have also sisters with Venus I am also sisters with um, another planet around Jupiter and some of the, the the planet Mars she was a beautiful lady at one time she's still alive but she is in her ancient years this one you call Gloria is has a very masked atmosphere and is very a very good place really but they are not humanoid completely they are taking on humanoid forms soon their evolution is coming up and they are not as high functioning as human beings yet but they are a beautiful species <laughs> Thank you. Um, let me ask you out of curiosity. Some people say that the moon was brought here, and others say that it had been here all along. What do you have to say about that? I know what the moon is all about. <laughs> But it is not my place to tell you all about the moon because there are reasons you must find out yourself. It will change your thought processes in some ways because it is not everything. It is actually none of the above. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, all right. Um, uh, Peter had a question. He would like to know if the portal that he opened for you, did it help you heal? 
Of course, every portal that is opened at this time will bring energy to me and will help me to heal. Because in portals, the energies can come down from the infinite universe or come up from me. And as they move, they can... The energy exchange is like a transfusion. <laughs> I get new energies from them all the time. So yeah. yes, they are very positive. I can move them up or I can move them down. Okay, and one last question. Uh, Paula is asking if you could speak a little bit about uh, the sinkholes. I guess what they are and what's causing them. Well, sinkholes are, are things that are actually very natural. They're not, they're not unnatural to your planet. <laughs> Sometimes there's a used cavern under the earth and if you build too many things on it, it just falls through. Or if the pressure of the surface is taut and it just falls through. It's nothing really very outrageous or special. It just happens. Now, there are a couple sinkholes <laughs> that were created for specific purposes of negativity, but we will not go into that because I will not speak of them. <laughs> okay, thank you. And Will has one last question. Oh, of course. Continue. Well. <laughs> It, it just took a while for my, my uh, equipment. Yes. Greetings, Gaia. Much love. Much love. I was wondering uh, if you can talk about Theia. Um, there's a theory out there that Theia was a planet that crashed into you many billions of years ago that helped contribute to your mass and energies. Well, when I was a baby, I don't remember everything that happened as, as when I was an infant. But yes, I was told <laughs> that, that I had a merging of planets, a merging of energies at one time. It was meant to be because God thought, or source, or whatever you want to call him, <laughs> thought that I was a little small and wanted to beef me up a bit. <laughs> And it was when the my planet surface was molten, when things were still hot, and I was still cooling, and so these things are possible at this time. But having a memory of it? No! <laughs> I would think it would be very painful, actually, but... Uh, actually, I don't remember a thing, So, but I was told that this did happen, yes. But I was very young, you understand. Before my great awakening, so to speak, I was still forming. <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. Oh, very nice. Thank you, Mother well, Gaia. And I, I want to thank you for coming, and I also want to thank you for the gift you gave me at the beach. Oh, you're so welcome. There are gifts for people all over the place. <laughs> you so, just uh, have to look. <laughs> well, this, this, this stone is very precious to me. I think it's very mm -hmm. unique. So. And it has much energy, and I will give it a blessing. Thank you. Oh, yes. <laughs> I will show it to everyone. Yes. Look at how cute that stone is. Ah, oh, it's... Sin. Isn't that beautiful? It's Just very the beautiful. Way things are created. Ah. Well, I must go now. Thank you. Many of you are so beautiful. I just want to give you all my blessing. Thank you. Much love. Mother Gaia? Yes. I would just like to say my name is Sharon. Hello. I wanted to Hello. show you my face, and my emblem on my avatar is my idea of like God, Gaia, self. So I just wanted to show 
show that to you. So many <laughs> thanks. You are so blessed. Thank you. <laughs> oh, blessings to you all. <laughs> Much love. <laughs> it was good to be with you. <laughs> Listen to the birds. <laughs> she loves more than me. 